Ares Archimedes, who you all remember, was supposed to have leapt out of his bath, ran down the street quite naked, shouting, Eureka, I have found it. He lived over 2,000 years ago and was credited with the invention of the propeller. While, of course, he did not imagine one of this size, we have probably to thank him for the idea which now propels ships and aeroplanes. Roger Bacon, who lived in the 13th century, suffered imprisonment for 14 years for his scientific opinions. That's how scientists were treated then. Today we just laugh and let them starve in peace. Roger Bacon first introduced gunpowder into England, which made blasting possible. Fireworks too, and in fact the 101 things for which gunpowder is now responsible. Did you know that Bacon experimented with model aeroplanes? Perhaps just like this. Amazing for him 600 years ago to imagine heavier-than-air flight. In the next room is representative of Faraday's laboratory, where he worked a century ago. This coil is the exact apparatus used by Faraday. And here is another, a circular coil. From these two coils and the work conducted in this room sprang the whole vast industry of electrical engineering, symbolized in this great power station, which can provide light, warmth, power, in fact, the very lifeblood of civilization. The motor car depends upon electric ignition, which in turn is dependent entirely upon the work of Michael Faraday. One of the most sensational electrical developments, wireless, is represented by the cabin of Elettra, Marconi's yacht, where so much of his work has been carried out. To Marconi, we owe the development of shortwave radio telephony, which is now linking up London with the whole empire and literally throwing a girdle round the world through the great broadcasting stations. Broadcasting, perhaps, more than anything else, helps one to realise what we owe to the men of science through the ages. Inventors, you know, are not always quite mad.